<clears throat> okay, that looks as if it's um, if, as if it's me. Uh, welcome, all musicians. Start to play. Uh, this is an introduction uh, to philosophy A level for Hills Road Sixth Form College. John Fiedler is my name. I teach philosophy alongside Hannah Hacking, who's our head of department, and uh, Adrian Mihai, who uh, is joining us as well, together with Freya and Josh, uh, year two, year thirteen students. So um, we move on to the first uh, slide, which is why study philosophy. This sounds like a defense, and I'm going to uh, be careful not to give too much of a hard sell here, because of course, philosophy A-level might not be to your taste uh, or your academic inclination at all, but uh, just to sketch out a few reasons why one should study philosophy. Uh, Plato in his Republic, um, 488 is the section you could look it up, tells a nice story about a, a ship, which is a symbol for uh, the state. And it has lots of uh, unfocused individuals that don't know where they're going on it, together with a quarreling crew that are engaged in some petty power struggle for the helm. And the one character who is ignored in uh, the story is person that Plato calls the true navigator, the person who understands the seasons and how to navigate by the stars. And this is the true philosopher. Now, Plato uh, has quite an eccentric view on what these stars are. He believes these are abstractions that are perfect versions and have a life of their own. And you don't need to commit to that view. Uh, but certainly philosophy does uh, work on an abstract level, a general level rather than the parochial. Uh, it challenges received opinion and is subversive uh, in this respect. So often people in authority don't like it. Uh, it helps one to discipline one's thoughts, argue convincingly, defends values and human rights, and offers resources from that great treasure trove of great minds through the history of the subject in face of the panic and confusion of life. These are the kind of defenses that one can give prior to studying, but there seems something wrong in trying to defend something that you're not familiar with. So I separate my defense there in the slide into, into two categories, and the second one is ex post, from after. And so I think it's very helpful for someone who's wondering about philosophy to actually do some, otherwise you're in a position where someone asks you, what is the value of this music that you haven't heard? It's far more sensible to listen to it and then judge its value. So I would advise anyone to read some philosophy, and there are two texts that are recommended there. Uh, anything by Nigel Warburton is, is very good. Uh, there might be a copy in your school library, uh, should you be allowed to um, uh, go in there. Um, certainly Warburton uh, has these interviews called um, Philosophy Vites that you can access online. And his little book, Philosophy the Basics, has a nice chapter on the philosophy of perception that's worth reading, uh, together with Thomas Nagel's book, What Does It All Mean? Not all chapters are relevant to the A-level, but certainly if you uh, take half an hour and read a section of that, then you'll very quickly uh, gauge whether if this is a subject that interests or irritates you. And so you're making an informed choice then. So what does the course involve? Well, um, there are two years. Uh, in the first year, we will study epistemology and moral philosophy alongside one another. So there are four lessons. You would have two lessons in epistemology, two lessons in moral philosophy. What are these subjects? Well, epistemology is the study of knowledge. We look at topics such as how does one define knowledge? Uh, we look at knowledge from perception and knowledge from reason, and also uh, skepticism, whether we can whether we can doubt certain things. So that old chestnut of how do we know this isn't all a dream? So essentially, epistemology is a study of the nature and limitations of knowledge, whereas moral philosophy is the study of moral judgments, and that takes three parts. The first part is uh, an exploration of normative ethical accounts. A normative ethical account uh, is, a, uh, is one that tries to give you a moral advice or instruction. 
We also look at applied ethics. So there are various topics, stealing, lying, eating animals, um, and meta-ethics. And meta-ethics is essentially where the philosophical meat lies. We examine the kind of claim that a claim to right and wrong is. So what kind of a statement is the statement such and such is right or such and such is wrong in comparison with other types of statement? Then in the second year, uh, we will look at the philosophy of religion and the philosophy of mind. So these uh, two modules are called the metaphysics of God and the metaphysics of mind. Uh, metaphysics is a, uh, a posh term for studying these abstract ideas that Plato mentions in his uh, ship story. And so in the philosophy of religion module, we will look at uh, the so-called proofs of the existence of God, as well as the coherence of the concept of God, the problem of evil, and uh, the nature of religious language. The metaphysics of mind is the study of the nature of conscious experience. We look at what is a thought, where is the thought, uh, is our consciousness uh, just a physical process, brain activity, uh, and nothing more. And so uh, we will look at uh, the, the main uh, canonical accounts in relation to, to those four uh, modules. What skills will students gain from philosophy? I'd like to think that uh, students, looking at uh, Freya and Josh here, um, will emerge from the course more careful and precise, articulate, critical, happier working on an abstract level, more questioning and more reflective. And it's worth saying, because there is a joke, isn't there, about what do you say to a philosophy graduate? You would, um, may I have fries with that? Uh, so there's a kind of joke about the, just the unemployability of the subject, but these skills strike me as, as voc vocational skills. Um, and so obviously this course isn't as uh, vocational, obviously vocational as um, uh, architecture or engineering or, or, or these, these kind of subjects. But uh, I think philosophy is a marketable uh, degree and, uh, and A-level, uh, and um, these, uh, vo uh, these skills are indeed vocational skills. How are students supported? Well, the uh, college offers support in all sorts of ways. Um, I think gone are the days where philosophy A-level was taught by an English teacher or a history teacher just having a go. I think over the last 10 years, uh, it's become more of a specialist thing now. And so all the staff here are, are specialists. And hopefully uh, we are producing useful resources. There's also a Philosophy Plus session every week, and that's fairly seasonal. Uh, at the moment, I'm hoovering up students have, who have changed into philosophy from another subject and helping them catch up. Uh, there may be a week where I see students individually to go over feedback from a, a piece of work that we don't have time to in, in uh, the lesson. There might be a, a week where I just repeat a lesson and if there's sufficient interest, I could, I could just uh, go over a topic and teach uh, that like an extra class. And of course, when uh, revision comes up, then, then that's different again. We also run a peer mentoring system that, that works in a lot of cases. And this introduces a lower six student to an upper six student. And that's mutually advantageous, really. It's advantageous for the upper six student uh, to uh, go through material so as they're, they're not. It alleviates the burden, really, of revision uh, at the end of the year. And it's advantageous for the lower six student to have someone near their age and experience to go over. Uh, topics and then to think up difficult questions for staff. Assessment tends to be uh, a quite loom large in, in people's mind uh, in open evenings and there's no uh, coursework in this subject. It's all exam based. And so there's uh, the, the national exam at the end of two years. Uh, there are two papers, each of three hours. And so one paper will examine epistemology and ethics, the first year material, and the second paper will um, examine the second year material, the philosophy of religion and the philosophy of mind. For each module, epistemology, ethics, religion, and mind, uh, you will get five questions, a three mark question, two five mark questions, a 12 mark question, and a 25 marker. 
And so the assessment through the two years uh, will pretty much uh, match um, these questions. The student is required to write a sentence for a three marker, a paragraph for five marks, and uh, about a page for a 12 mark answer. So they're a bit more like GCSE, but the 25 mark essays require a longer answer of around say four sides of handwritten A4. The A grade scripts we get back each year uh, as exemplars uh, tend to be around 20 paragraphs. So this is a substantial piece of writing on a forbiddingly abstract uh, subject. But of course, there's lots of scaffolding in place through the two years to help the person to uh, uh, have a go at that and succeed in, in, in that. I tend to put more emphasis on the 25 markers through the course because that's what people find trickier. And in looking at the 25 marker, um, one and it focuses on a philosophical evaluation, but you tend to hoover up uh, material for the short tariff questions anyway. There are lots of opportunities and for competitions and uh, guest speakers and visits. Um, we do run our own uh, essay prizes. I'm afraid the, 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 the prizes are fairly low budget. I think a couple of Twixes were the prizes last, uh, last week. Um, but we do help students as well enter university essay prizes. Uh, and this is run by a, a handful of universities. Sheffield is, is one. Um, Cambridge, different colleges, Trinity College and Newnham College do. And Cherry, a couple of years ago, won the Newnham College essay prize. Uh, I worked with her on this and can't for the life of me remember what the, what the topic was, but I, I think it was consent, actually. And I think it, were, it was certainly something within political philosophy, but she was, um, she was awarded that prize. I think she got something like £100 for that, which is, which is very good. Uh, the student-run philosophy society is active. Uh, the last talk we had was on the philosophy of humour, so we tend to invite people in to talk about things that aren't related to the syllabus, just to uh, get an idea of what's out there. Uh, and we've had a lot of um, well-known guest speakers, Honora O'Neill, Rowan Williams and Simon Blackburn, for instance, have spoken at the college. We last had a philosophy trip um, to Cambridge, of all places, and we went in to hear a talk about philosophical zombies, which is quite uh, seasonal at the moment being Halloween. Uh, and students enjoyed that because I ended up having an argument with the uh, person who gave the paper. So it was kind of real life philosophy in, 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 uh, in practice. What do philosophy students typically go on to do? There isn't really a typical philosophy student and, and it's all the better for it. Um, there are as many male students as female, as many science students as art students who take philosophy. Uh, and so there isn't really a typical profile um, in, in if, because there's no typical profile, there's no typical profile in terms of destination either. So over the years, our students have gone on to read Arabic, uh, law, computer science, international relations, and loads of other things as well. Uh, medicine actually is fairly, um, can be a popular option. Uh, what's, what's nice is that a number of students go on to read philosophy uh, as at undergrad. And um, this can be either pure philosophy degree or philosophy in politics, philosophy in maths uh, is, is a course that is offered by various universities uh, and PPE, of course. Uh, and out of those students, a number of uh, students go on then to do graduate work and become professional philosophers, which is even more encouraging. So what do current students think about the course? In a few slides time, we will ask some real life uh, current students what they uh, think about the course and what they have to add and comment on uh, on, on this, but I did ask uh, some students a few years ago, recorded their answers uh, with the proviso that they were honest answers. And uh, so there are a few selection, uh, a few select comments for you. Um, I'll just go through them. If you like deep thinking, abstract analysis and essay writing, then philosophy is for you. Philosophy is unique, difficult and very 
uh, different from anything at GCSE. And I think students will find uh, that there is a gulf between GCSE and A-level anyway, but in some subjects that gulf is felt more than others. I have a friend who uh, calls uh, philosophy, the further maths of the humanities. And I think a bit like physics and further maths, it's deemed uh, quite a bit of a step up really from uh, GCSE in terms of the content and also what is required. I think it's a tough course. Um, it's demanding, requires reading outside lessons, but tackles the big subjects. And finally, it makes your head hurt, but more interesting than I thought it would be. Praise indeed. Now, uh, student performance. So, so there are two statistics here uh, that require, I think, a little, a little bit of interpretation. So on, on the, the slide that's on the left of the screen, this is A star to B grades, 62%. And that looks good uh, in comparison to the national average. But then that might be because the nas national average is very bad. Um, and so uh, I think maybe a more telling statistic uh, is to compare Hills Road uh, results uh, with uh, centers of a similar size. So, so big state six form colleges. And certainly in 2019, um, our uh, statistic for A stars to B was 65% and similar centers uh, was 41%. So I think that's more of a, a, a telling statistic. On, on the right, um, that's just pa the pass rate. So A, A star to E, so how many people passed? So you might want to ask, well, why isn't it 100%? And this is an average over the last three years. Actually, again, I looked at the 2019 stats uh, and in comparison with similar centers nationally, uh, there was an overall pass rate of 97% uh, and, and last year ours was 98%, so 1% uh, more. But we, we've got, well, as we, we have three groups in the lower six at the moment, which is quite a lot. Um, in previous years, we haven't had that many students, so around 30 students. And so it only really needs one student to fail uh, philosophy for that to be 95%. And, and in various cases, I can think of a few off the top of my head, we've kept a student on because if we didn't, even though they were likely to fail, their profile wouldn't be viable and they would have had to have left college. So we've always put kind of education first rather than exam performance. Um, and so that perhaps explains why that that's 95% rather than 100%. But um, uh, pleasing statistics anyway. Now, my understanding is that this slide is uh, representative of people uh, of people's destinations last year. Um, so uh, all of those who left Hills Road last year who studied philosophy went on to higher education. And you can see the, the range of courses there. I do notice that there aren't any sciences, uh, and that is unusual. Um, we, we mainly do have students going on to, to read maths and science. Um, so it's slightly unusual. Uh, I think that's all I have to say by way of a first pass. So if we maybe uh, leave an opportunity for Freya and Josh to introduce themselves and say something about philosophy, and then I'm happy together with the students and with my colleague, Adrian Mihai, to answer any questions in the chat. Who wants to go first then? Freya? I think I'm going first, yeah. I'm good. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm Freya, and I just, the philosophy course is demanding, but it's really, really rewarding. Um, the courses that we, the topics we cover in the course are super interesting, and, you know, if you like a good debate, and if you like questioning things, then I think philosophy is the right course for you, because it is a lot of questioning everything, <laughs> but it's fun and it's interesting and even though it is a lot of work if you're passionate about it it's not really like it's something that you'll enjoy putting hard work towards so I would choose philosophy if you had the choice and if you enjoy studying the subjects that are available here because it is really rewarding 
Hi, I'm Josh. Uh, I completely agree with Freya. I I feel like it's a real privilege to be able to study philosophy, especially at Hills Road. Uh, Hills Road's general attitude is very much about being self-driven and an independent learner. That's not to say that there's not an incredible amount of support that goes along within the philosophy department. Um, my experience with philosophy personally is that it's taken my thinking and my ability to digest information and be analytical about it to another level. Um, some of the subjects that we've studied within philosophy have been really, really thought provoking. And that obviously covers in a really large part of it, uh, ethics and things that you end up looking at yourself and thinking critically about how you act and how your interactions with others are affected and things. And then also looking at things like knowledge that are uh, more tangible and less, I guess, um, self-inflicted in a sense. Um, and it's really just an opportunity to look at how you think about things uh, in its rawest form. Um, and that's just been an amazing experience is all I can say about it. Yeah, I completely agree. I came in late to philosophy as well. I joined like three weeks after, three, four weeks after, and the support was incredible. I caught up straight away. Um, it, it was just the support from the philosophy teachers was very good and I didn't find it hard transitioning at all and I was so happy with my choice. I'm incredibly thankful I changed to philosophy because Josh is right. It is so thought provoking and I just I really, really recommend taking philosophy. Great. So philosophy agrees. We're very pleased that you changed. Um, I won't I won't ask what, what from because it's to be bad publicity. Um, we could uh, maybe dive in with some questions here. Uh, is philosophy a heavy subject? How manageable is the workload? I suppose there are uh, two things there, aren't they? The kind of the content is heavy by its nature. Of course, that's a kind of metaphor, uh, you know, um, uh, heaviness. Um, but with regards to how much work uh, there is, we, we hope it's a reasonable amount. We certainly uh, kind of careful controlling that. Uh, but I think philosophy is one of these subjects where the more you put in, uh, the trickier it can get sometimes. Um, uh, and equally, the less work you put in, the more superficial your answer is, and so the less credit you get. Um, <clears throat> I just whip through the other two, and then maybe Adrian can, can have a go. I haven't studied philosophy at GCSE. Will it be difficult for me to do the A-level? Um, I think it's difficult for everyone to do the A-level, so no more difficult uh, for you. And I, I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't be put off at all uh, because you haven't done a GCSE that calls itself philosophy. So don't worry about that. Average class size uh, in the upper six at the moment is things around 16, 17, uh, and the lower six, 22. What other philosophy, uh, what uh, other A-levels does it fit with? In practice, everything, because you'd usually have philosophy of something, philosophy of maths, philosophy of religion, philosophy of art. Um, in practice, I found that students doing business or geography tend to struggle a little bit. I'm not sure what that is. Obviously, there's business ethics and environmental ethics, so there's a connection there. But in the past, uh, that hasn't worked so well as a combination. There is no coursework, final grades, uh, entirely exam-based. Adrian, do you want to have a go at the next one? What careers are linked to philosophy? Yeah, thanks, John. Well, you, you went over it, I think it's everything. Uh, either you can continue in philosophy and uh, then you can, uh, you can go you know, either become a teacher of philosophy at uh, either A level or um, university, or why not? Or you can go into research if you really like it. Um, you can go into RS. To, to be specific, you can do philosophy of religion, for example. There's a big uh, uh, faculty at, in Cambridge, for example, the University of Cambridge. Um, but otherwise, you can, like John said very clearly, I mean, you, you, you can do anything. You can do architecture, you can do you know, um, engineering if you want. I mean, that's, that's fine. I mean, philosophy will just give you the resources to, to, to you know, to, to do abstract thinking and to, to to systematize and to analyze 
and to manage a lot of information that you that you receive from your other courses. So I think it's it's very very helpful. Um, Thanks. So, so um, in other words, uh, none and all. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could say um, what GCSE requirement uh, are the requirements. So um, we uh, don't specify like uh, maths or uh, science. Um, it's it is just the same as the other arts and humanities subjects. Um, How much ancient philosophy is studied? Uh, well, everything really is the follows in the footnotes uh, to Plato. Um, so uh, both all of it and none of it, um, it's more problem-based than specifically focused on uh, persons such as Aristotle or, or Plato. Uh, but when we look at the definition of knowledge, we start with Plato's definition. When we look at moral philosophy, Aristotle comes in. So it's more arranged in terms of themes and claims rather than, rather than people or, uh, or arranged historically. Certainly courses on the continent are more... Uh, organized historically. You mentioned that you're hoovering up students who have changed to philosophy from other subjects. Does that mean that if a wrong choice is made in a subject, it's possible to change? That's a really nice question, Alice. So um, it is possible to change. And so ideally, uh, you'd want to nail your colors to the mast and make an informed choice um, because it is, you know, it takes administrative time and it's, and it's a hassle. Uh, for the student to kind of catch up uh, with with work. So you wouldn't want to just come in and do anything and then, you know, feel completely kind of uh, free to just change. Uh, but you aren't uh, imprisoned in a subject if in the, in the first few weeks you really don't like it, then there will be a number of discussions with all those involved, with parents and with relevant teachers. And if it's possible, if the timetable allows, then you can change. Is there heavy reading for this subject? And how similar is this to RS? Uh, well, we'll ask Adrian in a second because he teaches both, but I think uh, our essay level is more descriptive, we're more evaluative. Um, and uh, Anthony Kenny, uh, the famous philosopher, um, said that there's no shallow end to philosophy. So uh, that's another uh, metaphor. But yes, uh, the reading is heavy. Uh, well, for the RS, I mean, we, we are going to study some uh, some subjects that we are studying in, in RS also. For example, ethics, we're going to see some ethical theories in philosophy that we are going to see in RS also. Um, in the second year for the metaphysics of God, where we are going to look at uh, proofs and arguments for God's existence um, and problem of evil and so on forth, uh, we are going to see that in RS also. The only difference is that in philosophy, we are seeing them more in-depth. We are going more in-depth to the subjects, while for RS, we're you know, almost at the surface. We're scratching the surface a little. While in philosophy, we are going in-depth, we're going to look at authors that you're not going to see in RS, for example, as philosophers, and we're going to study and see argumentations, and, which I think is more interesting in the philosophy side. Could studying philosophy be helpful in a career of law? Yes, is the answer. Uh, study of arguments. Jurisprudence, of course, explores the uh, philosophical questions to do with what the law should be. Um, but we're a bit more suspicious of rhetorical tricks than, than lawyers, I think. Does philosophy pair well with English literature and or history? Yes, both. Uh, and I always think that a fluent writer, so English and history students tend to be fluent writers are at an advantage in this A level as well. Was there a question? What were the exam? What are the exams like? Has that disappeared? Um, oh yeah, what are the exams like? Freya and Josh, what are the exams like? Um, well, it's all essay based. Um, so you've got like three markers, five markers, twelve markers, and twenty-five markers. Um, if you know the content, it's, it's it's not hard, but it is just learning all the content, which is where you'll get stumped if you don't know enough, especially for 25 markers. But we do so much practice, so it's not really anything you have to worry about because you will get taught how to do it and you will get to just keep 
doing it over and over and over. But yeah, 25 markers are definitely quite hefty. But they are also, you know, rewarding. Again, philosophy is just a rewarding subject. I don't know if Josh agrees, but... Yeah, yeah, I'm completely on the same page. Compared to my other subjects, I love philosophy exams. Um, I, I've always struggled with exams and especially essays, ironically. But um, what I found in philosophy is that it works incrementally. So you start with one markers, three markers, five markers, build up to a 12 marker, and then you finish with a 25 marker. And it works sort of perfectly as you're easing into the exam because you begin to expand on some ideas. And um, yeah, it just works. It is just a great exam, in my opinion. I had no idea that you enjoyed philosophy questions so much. Please, please let me just set low four for you um, starting tomorrow. Um, thank you. Uh, Alpha asks, does philosophy include religious views on different ethical beliefs? F philosophy includes philo philosophical views uh, on different ethical beliefs, which may be compatible with religious views, but we're, we're not interested in religious views per se, because there's so much bound with kind of history, tradition and, and culture that we don't explore. Uh, Faith asks, how easy is it to catch up if you fall, fall behind or miss a lesson? Um, we advise uh, that you get a textbook um, and we provide kind of handouts for everything that is like a script. But a lesson is like a conversation, really. So if you've missed the conversation, then you kind of you miss how it unfolds. So it's best not, best not to miss these things. <clears throat> but of course, possible to catch up. And that's where the Philosophy Plus sessions come in as well. In the coverage on mathematics within the course, um, well, we've enough trouble with philosophy, really, than the mathematics as well, but certainly um, the philosophy of maths is, is covered in epistemology to a basic level uh, where we explore uh, what kind of knowledge uh, 2 plus 3 equals 5 is, but I think that's as advanced as the maths get, although what's that Mino slave story that might... The, working out the, the area of a given square might be a bit more advanced. What would the workload look like for philosophy in an average week? Um, maybe that's a Freya and Josh question again, um, or Josh and Freya. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, sure thing. I, I think it's not as bad as it may seem. I think that when you start at sixth form, it can be really daunting um, because there's suddenly this idea that you have to be an independent learner um, but the reality of it is that it, it really is not that bad. I find with philosophy particularly, it's not necessarily about overloading yourself with loads of extra reading and note taking. It's just about working in a smart and constructive way. Um, and I find that if you're engaged in the lessons and you're asking questions, that initial understanding is the biggest favour that you can do for yourself in terms of retaining the knowledge later on in the course. Um, so in terms of workload, there is definitely a workload. You do have to be proactive in taking your notes. You know, reading ahead's always great, but uh, equally, it's not going to run you over at all. It, it, really, it really shouldn't be a worry. No, yeah. And you'll always have time ahead. So if you get set a 25 marker, which eventually you will, you'll have at least two weeks to do it. So it is just time management. But again, like Josh said, reading ahead is great, but don't stress yourself about thinking you have to read the whole textbook first or the whole of the handout before lessons. Like you won't have to do that. You just, you do what's best for you in terms of your learning and how you find it best to learn. But the philosophy load of work, I, it is manageable. Thank you. Akira asks, Within philosophy, how much individual or original work do we do? Do we study just ideas or philosophers themselves? Uh, and we always put claims before people in philosophy. We're interested in what the claim is rather than necessarily who said it, whilst giving some context, of course. Um, in the 25 mark questions, you are the philosopher. So it is all about uh, uh, your work and how you justify it. Um, but of course, you have to join in a conversation that's been running for quite some time. How much of the course is opinion based? I'd say zero, strictly speaking, because uh, an opinion is that which just a view that doesn't have justification. And in philosophy, we're all about providing a justification or good reason or argument for believing something. And I think opinion is a, a kind of GCSE word uh, for something else. But I'd say zero. Is studying philosophy good for a Christian? Uh, I'd say certainly in Christianity, there's a very rich, 
philosophical uh, heritage, um, but it's a rich tradition in, in other ways as well. And I've never actually met uh, a Christian who's been persuaded by the ontological argument or the argument from design. Perhaps Adrian could come in there. Um. Well, one of the authors that we're going to look at is uh, Thomas Aquinas, for example. And uh, we're going to look even at uh, people like Descartes, who, who always said that he's still a Christian, even if God doesn't play such a big role in his philosophy. Um, we have philosophers like Leibniz that we're going to look at, philosophers like Kant, for whom God doesn't really play any role whatsoever in his epistemology, so in his uh, study of knowledge, how the knowledge works, how the mind works, how consciousness works. And nevertheless, uh, he was a fervent believer, he went to church, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, one doesn't exclude the other, but if, we can take the example of Kant, like John said, the ontological argument didn't really <laughs> persuade him at all. Faith asks, does philosophy go well with psychology, sociology, and law? I would say yes, yes, and yes. Marzouk uh, asks whether philosophy and psychology have no coursework. Philosophy doesn't have coursework. I can't speak for psychology. I don't know. Uh, what might you say to somebody choosing between classical civilization and philosophy? Uh, I would say choose both because they're both great subjects. But you, again, of course, need to... Uh, make an informed choice. You need to read some classic and read some philosophy and see uh, who wins out if you're torn. Chloe asks, how much does philosophy relate to classical studies? Would it be useful to have a background understanding of this? I don't think it would be useful necessarily to, uh, to have a background. As I say, we focus on the claims being made that happened to be made by Plato, 375 BC, but they could have been made by Barney yesterday. Uh, the claim is the same, um, philosophically speaking. How free thinking or prescribed are desired exam answers? So I'm, I'm just working out the syntax of that. How free thinking or prescribed, okay, are desired exam answers. Um, I think uh, free thinking isn't itself a, I, I need to know a little bit more about what we mean by free thinking here. Um, if, it's, if it's openness, I think that's an intellectual virtue, but it's, it's got to be, um, there's got to be some rhyme and reason to it. And, and certain other uh, virtues are, are prescribed. Uh, conciseness and and direction and precision etc so uh, free thinking in itself i don't think is is enough i don't think it's either a necessary condition really so neither necessary nor sufficient concerning the study of consciousness how do we learn about descartes claims in contrast to hegel's master slave dialectic um that's too uh complicated a uh, comparison. Um, but just uh, a thought on that. Uh, doesn't the slave come out on top in, in the master-slave dialectic? Because the slave is, is closer to being, being able to um, actually do things, to, to cater for one's needs. So it's not necessarily, when, when often people think about the master-slave dialectic, they think the master is in charge but it could well be the opposite. Um, that's too complicated as a, uh, a comparison to deal with an open evening. How much essay practice writing would we get through the course? So we tend to set a piece of work every two weeks, but it could be a series of short tariff questions, or it could be a 25 mark uh, essay, or it could be an essay plan. So I think it's about kind of continuity building skills and building people up so as they aren't overfaced rather than just churning out loads of work in their direction. Would this work well with something like English combined? Uh, I think it would and lots of students um, uh, do both English combined and philosophy. I do. And you fi find it works okay? Yeah they work really well together because they're both essay based so you know 
when you're writing your essays in English combined, you're also writing essays in philosophy and they kind of level themselves out. I also do classics for the person asking about whether to choose philosophy or classics. And I would choose both because they work really nicely because we study um, Stoicism in classics, which is philosophy based. So they work really well together. I wouldn't be able to choose. But yeah, for English combined, they work really well together. And I would, if that's your choice. Lovely. Uh, Faith asks, do you revise previous yeah, content so. lessons? That sounds very good practice. Um, so as you uh, remind uh, the uh, group what we've done and what the context is, absolutely. There's other another good way called spiraling where you may be, for instance, in uh, looking at something in the second year, you uh, compare it to something in the first year. And so you're kind of doing a little bit of revision there. So yes, all good practice. Uh, Eleanor asks, what are the topics, units do you cover? So um, epistemology, ethics, philosophy of religion and mind. But the actual specific topics can, can be found online if you Google the following. If you type in philosophy AQA 7172. So philosophy AQA 7172. There is only one uh, exam board AQA that offers philosophy A-level but there, it, it's changed, it keeps changing every few years. So the, uh, the current syllabus is 7172. Is a combination of STEM subjects with philosophy on the side viable as someone interested in both subjects? I, I think so. I think philosophy with STEM subjects on the side would be an excellent uh, choice. How many lessons are online and how many lessons are real life lessons at the moment uh, in, in the college because of uh, COVID-19, as you know, there are um, two, two hour lessons, one week uh, in college, and then uh, the next week you'll have two uh, hours um, for each teacher online. <clears throat> but hopefully that will change soon. What kind of independent learning is a student expected to do during their spare time? Well, students, what, what, what do you, um, how much independent learning do you do? Um, well, I'd say it's a lot of self-revising and things like that. So when we study an argument, the teacher might ask you to, you know, memorize the premises of the argument and things like that. And it is good to do extra reading but like you don't have to do heaps. For example, we studied Descartes' meditations and it is really interesting to read the meditations and it would help as well. But uh, independent learning wise, it's independent, but it is based off what you're doing and what you're studying towards and what you're aiming for. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's really easy to get so uh, deeply entangled in some of the subjects that you're studying that you get a little bit carried away um and honestly the best independent learning you can do for yourself is just making sure that you legitimately understand the things that you're learning in class it's really easy to think that you grasp the concept but when actually you've got a little bit of room to just uh master it a bit further um so that'd be my advice great thanks it makes it sound as if these are the the uh, two the only two models students in philosophy because you're giving such good answers but uh nice to say that they're, they're all uh like that really they're all very good um um, now, how related are philosophy and music? Is there a topic on this? They are related. There's no topic. There used to be a module in aesthetics. There sadly isn't. But if you're interested in this, maybe there's a philosophy bite uh, recorded on the link between philosophy and music. It tends to be ontology is the link. And Stephen Davis has written lots of interesting things on that. How interesting intriguing is the coursework this is faith walsh faith is on fire this evening and all homework there's no coursework there's homework and guaranteed that every single homework is uh is absolutely intriguing uh, how far does philosophy tie into maths a level i think it's when we say it's philosophy of something the philosophical questions about for instance art or about maths such as what is a number so i'm not aware that mathematicians uh, in the A-level uh, consider um, what a number is. I might be wrong. Um, 
and uh, we do a little bit in epistemology, but not, not a huge amount. But um, uh, there's no uh, direct link, but certainly in philosophy, in epistemology especially, we consider what type of knowledge mathematical knowledge is and what mathematicians are up to. How much homework is set per week? Well, we tend to go for fortnightly uh, homeworks and a typical homework might be a three, a five, a three and a five uh, mark question or two 12 mark questions or a 25 mark question. I think homeworks tend to be um, practice questions that would be useful then to revise from with the exam in mind. Uh, what are the specific entry requirements as with the same as with any other arts and humanities subject? So even though philosophy is a tricky uh, subject, we, we don't, we aren't um, selective. We don't put a, um, uh, a requirement on having uh, lots of A grades. Could doing philosophy at A level have any sort of detriment to studying it at higher level? Yes, that's a good question. Um, yes, is, is the answer to that. Um, possibly. Uh, maybe less so now. As I say, 10 years ago, there were a lot of non-specialists teaching it. Um, and philosophers at university uh, would tend to want to unlearn or, or, or unteach their students. Less so now because of subject specialists. Um, and we've got two subject specialists in the department who also teach at university, Adrian and myself. So we have a foot in both camps um, and it would certainly be embarrassing uh, to, <laughs> to have uh, our stuff unlearned. Do we cover any modernist ideas? Well, in philosophy, modernist usually means not medieval or not ancient. Um, and so Plato, uh, sorry, Descartes is, is deemed a kind of first modern philosopher, <clears throat> which is, I think, a bit doubtful, but um, Descartes is, of course, 1596 to 1650, so it doesn't sound particularly modern. Um, so modern in that sense, maybe the question also means contemporary philosophers who are still alive. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, there are, um, in the philosophy of mind and ethics and epistemology, uh, and so it is uh, not hugely up to date, maybe a little 15 years or so out of date, but, but still um, we do look at philosophers who are still writing. No more questions. Oh, uh, how overwhelming stressful is the workload? And um, Faith, you haven't even joined the college and you're worried about stress and overwhelming workload. Um, so, so, so don't. Um, and certainly uh, if you find it overwhelming or, or stressful, then you would need to, um, to talk to someone because there's, there's a problem. Either you're not understanding it in class uh, or perhaps there's a kind of an organization issue. So you'd involve your teachers and tutors and, and have that conversation but uh, we aim for minimum overwhelming and stress on average how many students do philosophy per year um, so about 75 I think in the first year um, and around about 40 in the second year so so it fluctuates really between uh, two groups to kind of three or four Okay, thanks very much for your um, attention and patience and all your wonderful questions. And thanks very much for uh, Adrian for his input and for Josh and Freya as well. But we'll leave it there. Bye.